Ahmad Ahmad's audacious bid to dethrone Issa Hayatou as CAF president was boosted by the unanimous endorsement of all 14 members of the Council of Southern African Football Association's COSAFA. The decision of COSAFA to back Ahmad put the region at loggerheads with a long-standing president. Hayatou viewed COSAFA's decision as a serious sign of dissent. But with FIFA president Gianni Infantino's support for Ahmad's bid, the end looked near for Hayatou. At the end of the drama, the 57-year-old Ahmad won 34 of the 54 votes to become the seventh CAF president in the body's 60-year history. The Ahmad revolution swept through the polls with the emergence of new members into the executive committee. Nigeria's Amadou Pinnick, South Africa's Danny Jordan, Liberia's Musa Biliti, Sierra Leone's Isha Johansson, Suleiman Waberi of Djibouti and Fuzi Lekia of Morocco got on board. It means that we are open to change. It means that we're open to positive change. It means that now all the areas that maybe people were not so very happy with, I mean, put it this way, with a change comes new possibilities and new openings. You only come about a change if you're not happy with the current situation. So whatever was there that was not uh, helping the African nation, if you like, uh, through football, uh, we can actually take a look at that. Ahmad's first job would be to introduce a new code of ethics and he has pledged to extend ethics checks on African football officials. Now to discuss football management in Africa, I'm now being joined on the news at 10 by the editor-in-chief, Sports Village Square, Mr. Kunle Shulaja. Thank you so much for joining us on the news at 10. It's a pleasure to be with you. All right, so we have two elections to talk about really quickly. The CAF mm -hmm. Executive Committee election. Um, did it go the way you planned or were you thinking it was going to be tougher for him? Of course, it actually went according to the script, according to expectation. CAF is 60 years old. Half of the uh, lifetime of CAF had been taken by one man. 29 years as president, 31 years as member of the executive com committee. So that is too long a time for one man to take, especially when diminishing return have started setting in. Mm. But even when you look at Ahmad Ahmad, who's just coming in now, he's been chairman of his own FA for 17 years. That's a pretty long time. Is that, is that a sign of things to come? Yeah. I don't know. For his own country, the country may not have so much pedigree when it comes to football. That's why one man can stay that long there. But when you talk of Africa, Africa has come a long way when it comes to global football. Some decades ago, African teams are not regarded at the World Cup. As a matter of fact, some years back, we, just, we don't even have any slot in the World Cup. But now we have five, and we are aiming at between seven and ten by the time 2026 World Cup. So that means football is becoming dynamic. And dynamism must also come into football administration. All right, let's look ahead. And we have our own win as well. Amadjo Pinnick there making it um, as well. So what should he do now to represent Nigeria's interest in CAF? I mean, we haven't had anybody since um, Emos Adamu. Yeah, yeah, he happens to be the third Nigerian ever to be in CAF in 60 years. So despite the, uh, the magnitude of football in Nigeria, when you talk about football in Africa, we may not be the very best, but we rank among the very best. And we should not, our voice must be heard. Our men must be in various uh, organizations in football. And the most important uh, uh, position to be in, in controlling uh, an organization like CAF is to be in the executive committee. You can count the number of Nigerians that have ever featured as officials in African Nations Cup, as referees in African Nations Cup. Some years back, the, the reason is that we don't have, I mean, uh, the moment you qualify, then you don't need to have referees there be, uh, so as to be unbiased. But that is no longer the situation now. Referees from teams that qualify for World Cup, for African Nations Cup, are now invited. But in the past 30 years, we, d we don't have up to three Nigerians who have officiated in the 
African Nations Cup. All right, hopefully that should change um, yeah. with this new development. Thank you so much, Mr. Kunle Shulaja, yeah, for joining welcome. us on the News at 10 tonight. Thank you very much. More sports up ahead. Now, the federal government congratulates the NFF president, Amadjo Kwenek, on his CAF election success, asks him to sustain Nigeria's influence in African football. That will be on sports. The statements. Many thanks, Ijoma. Well, the federal government has indeed congratulated Amadjo Pinnick on his success at the just-concluded Confederation of African Football CAF Executive Committee elections in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. Mr. Pinnick defeated the incumbent, Benin Republic's Musharrafu Anjari, by 32 votes to 17. Minister of Youth and Sports Development Solomon Dalong charged Mr. Pinnick to use his influence as CAF member to the development of Nigerian football. He becomes the third Nigerian, that's Mr. Pinnick, to get on the board of CAF after the late Orok Oyo Orok, Oyo Orok and Dr. Amos Adamu. Well, the League Bloggers Awards has named Ladan Bosso of El Kanemi Warriors and Sunday Aditranji of Abbey Warriors manager and player for the month of February in the Nigeria Professional Football League. Four wins out of five games proved to be enough for Bosso to claim the accolade ahead of Aqua United, Abdul Meikaba, Fidelis Ilichuko of MFM FC, and Abubakar Bala of Niger Tornadoes. Aditranji was picked for the Player of the Month from a short list of four players that featured El Kanemi Samuel Mathias, Ernest Governor of ABS FC, and Moses Ebie of Aqua United. In England, Aito Karanka has been sacked by Middlesbrough as they look to retain their Premier League status. The 43-year-old Spaniard departed on Thursday morning after three and a half years, with Borough currently sitting 19th on the log. The Teesiders have not won in 10 league outings since December the 17th and scoring only three goals in the process. Steve Agnew will take charge until a replacement is found. IOC President Thomas Bach has praised the great progress on the 2018 Winter Olympic Village as he toured the site in Pyeongchang in South Korea. Bach was joined on his visit by a selection of Olympic athletes, including U.S. skeleton racer Katie Leolanda. The Olympic Village in Pyeongchang is one of two villages that will house athletes during the 2018 Olympic Winter Games. It will accommodate competitors who compete on snow and at the sliding center comprising disciplines ranging from skiing and biathlon to bobsled and luge. And Paddy Lowe has joined the Williams Formula One team from Champions Mercedes with immediate effect as Chief Technical Officer. The team didn't say how big a stake Lowe had taken or where it had come from, with details expected to be made known at a later date. The Briton, who started his Formula One career at Williams back in 1987, also joins Williams' board of directors and will run the business with Deputy Principal Claire Williams and Chief Executive Mike O'Driscoll. And that's wrap in sports news. I'm Ayatunde Balogun. The news at 10 continues shortly. Thanks a lot, Ayotunde. A U.S. Senate committee has said there are no indications President Trump's private residence in New York, the Trump Tower, was wiretapped by the Obama administration. The president had accused his predecessor, Barack Obama, of wiretapping Trump Tower during the presidential race. The Republican chairman of the House Intelligence Committee on Wednesday said he did not believe there was an actual tap of Trump Tower. Mr. Trump has stood by his unverified allegations, saying a wiretap covers a lot of different things, promising some very interesting items coming to the forefront over the next two weeks. Well, the elections are over, and in the eyes of the Dutch Prime Minister, Mark Rutte, good has won over evil. With nearly all the votes counted, the parties easily beating the anti-immigration freedom party Hurt Valders. The election was seen as a test of support for the nationalist parties that have been gaining ground across Europe. A victorious Rutte revels in the night's win as supporters celebrate the trouncing of far-right Wilders. <laughs> 
Ruta's VVD party was projected to win 31 of Parliament's 150 seats, down from 41 at the last vote in 2012. But ahead of Builders, who tied in second place with two other parties at 19 each, according to the polls by national broadcaster NOS, based on interviews with voters. The result was a disappointment for Wilders, who had been in the lead in opinion polls until late in the campaign and had hoped to pull off an anti-establishment triumph in the first of three key elections in the European Union this year. He congratulated Ruta soon after his victory was announced, promising firm parliamentary opposition if he did not end up in the coalition. Outside the Dutch parliament, about half a dozen demonstrators gathered to thank voters for voting against the anti-EU and anti-Islam Freedom Party candidate, Hurt Wilders. We are here to thank the Netherlands that they have um, voted against populism and that they have voted for hope and unity and uh, to send out a message to Germany and France that there is also hope for their elections and that populism might have just ended here with these elections in the Netherlands. European Commission President Jean-Claude Juncker also congratulated Mr. Rutte on his election victory calling the result an inspiration for many. With the first election in the season done, Europe turns its attention to France and Germany, which would also be holding polls this year. And the main news again. President Mohamed Buhari today directed the finance minister and the central bank governor to facilitate release of the London Paris Club refunds to the states to help ease their financial hardship. The president issued a directive when he addressed the National Economic Council, made up of state governors and chaired by the vice president. Also today, the Senate refused to grant audience to the Controller General of Customs, retired Colonel Hamid Ali, over his failure to appear before them in customs uniform. Well, that's the news at 10 tonight. Thanks so much for staying with us. I'm Nijoma Renato. Have a good night.